I'm Kate Libby, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum. And I'd like to welcome you back to another installment of Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here on Facebook where we're going to be exploring one of the many objects from our collections here at the Maritime Museum. So today uh, we're talking about some of the most colorful, collectible objects in our collections here at the museum. Some of our uh, several hundred oyster cans in our collection. Now when you look at these oyster cans, I mean they're incredibly appealing. They're colorful, they've got um, really intricate artwork, they've got great branding, great slogans. These are really from a time period when marketing was in its infancy. And the reason that you see this you know, amazing amount of artistry on display in these cans is because they're competing with each other. So each of these uh, different cans represents an oyster brand, a packing house that was packing oysters, whether it was in Crisfield, Maryland, here in St. Michael's, in Baltimore, in Norfolk, or one of the other many Bay communities that were processing oysters in the late 19th and early 20th century. Now, for a long time, oysters couldn't be canned. There was really no good preservation method for them. So they were harvested in relatively small numbers and sold locally and eaten while still fresh. That all changed in the 19th century as the railroad system expanded and this pressure for more and more oysters came down from New England as cities like Boston and New York were seeking new markets for oysters and the Chesapeake was an obvious location. Now, also at this time period, another new innovation had come out of France, of all places, canning. Um, uh, Napoleon had incentivized uh, the, the idea of, find, of figuring out a, a better food preparation or preservation method, and so uh, um, Nicola Appert developed canning in 1812 that moved to New York, and then New Yorkers brought that idea to Baltimore. So Baltimore became this packing hub, and in places like Sparrow's Point, they were actually creating the metal that went into these cans. Lithographers in the city developed new techniques to cover the cans in these really brilliantly colored graphics. Because you've got to think at the end of the day, everybody wants you to buy their brand, but the contents of these cans are all exactly the same. So to differentiate yourself, you had to come up with kind of a, a fun slogan or, or maybe a wink, wink, nudge, nudge way to get marketers to, to pay attention to your particular brand. I want to focus on a couple of my favorites today. Um, at the top, we have Maryland Beauty. Obviously, they want you to think, oh, if you eat these oysters, you'll be a beautiful lady like is on the can. This is a great example of maybe an, another marketing device. Um, here we have the, the Stork brand oyster company, and you can see we've got a stork and a very healthy, naked little baby here in an oyster shell in the middle. And this is supposed to be sort of a play on the idea that, that oysters may inspire, you know, romantic feelings. You wait nine months after eating the oysters in this can, and the next thing you know, time for a baby. So there are plenty of people, I'm sure, who were really attracted to this particular brand by the distinctive graphics um, and really kind of the funny humor that's displayed in this particular oyster can. So if you buy oysters today, you'll notice that the, these cans like these are really no longer common. And that's because towards the middle of the 20th century, we start to see less and less oysters being produced in the Chesapeake. And that really starts to turn um, in the 1970s to the 1980s as oyster diseases sweep through the Chesapeake and really decimated the oyster industry. So, we no longer see these oyster cans in the grocery store or available. Instead, they're kind of those boring plastic containers. But we have these in our collection as a way to remind people of the heyday of oyster canning in the Chesapeake and the amazing amount of artistic license, beautiful colors, funny graphics, and tongue-in-cheek humor that a lot of these cans displayed. So if you come here to the Maritime Museum, you'll get to see some of these on exhibition here in the Oystering in the Chesapeake um, exhibit. But um, yeah, this, so this is one of my favorite objects from our collection. I hope you've enjoyed learning about it today on Chesapeake Treasure. Um, you might notice we're doing it a different day this week on Thursday. So if you wanna join us next week for another installment of Chesapeake Treasure, log on to Facebook and, and check our feed on Thursday. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great afternoon.